guys and welcome to part two of the 105 build. So, eh. first of all, I'm gonna say this is from Cruiser Convoy. Put their website down below and also a discount code as well. They're based over in Oklahoma. So anyone who's from America, you guys are lucky if you don't have to pay shipping. But otherwise they do ship to Australia. Uh, they also make really cool leather products it's pretty cool 105 is over there it does actually look a little bit different I want to stress that the plan for this wasn't to get crazy numbers out of this engine 18z engine being such an old engine has been around for a long time and pretty much everything that can be done to it has been done to it there's people that are stroking them and getting crazy figures out of 1HZ these days which is cool pretty sure it'd been used for towing because it had a towing module in it it came from a dealer like secondhand dealer and the tow ball and everything what I can tell from the service logs it did its first 200,000 in its first three years 2002 it had done 200,000 got it at 390 you know it had a really hard <laughs> by the sounds of it first few years and then pretty cruisy up until now we just don't know the history of the engine Maz, look. What are you doing? Oh my god. Anyway, I would have kept it stock except for the main reason that it is so slow. <laughs> Being the big wagon and with the four inch lift, knew we were gonna put 35s on it. And it's just so big and slow. So it had to have a turbo. I and mean, I don't tow much with the ute because everything just goes on the back. Probably gonna be towing more with the 105. So it needed that power, but it needed just to be reliable. The end goal is to get either an altitude compensator put on the pump or a comp compensated pump off another. They came out late in the later models factory. This one unfortunately didn't because it doesn't have all the you know EGR valves and you know save the dolphin stuff. It just has a normal pump that's the same as what's on this one HZ. You could go out and buy a 12 mil pump, not really where we wanted to put the money into it. Still got the standard pump. That means that it has very, very limited adjustment. You can pretty much just adjust the fuel. That's not necessarily good because you've got a nice curve for the air and the fuel goes like this. Really low where there's no air because the turbo hasn't spooled up. So you've got all this fuel but no air. So you've got heaps of soot. And then as it, the, this, this is the straight fuel line and the curve is like, ooh. So at one point they meet. And that's, that's the nice point. That's the ideal point. And it's good for that one little rev range. Uh, and then it goes the opposite again. So there'll be not enough fuel and lots of air. And then it'll go back again. So there'll be too much fuel and not enough air. Compensated pump is good because it compensates your fuel for the air. That's, I mean, it's way more complicated than that, but that's just a basic what's going on. So at the moment, it's a soot machine. There's soot everywhere. We only went in half a turn on the fuel screw. I just wanted to do this disclaimer because right at the beginning, people were asking for the results and I was giving them the dyno chart and they were pretty much just bagging it out, saying those are shit numbers, don't go to those guys. Like, I'm happy with the people that I chose to do the dyno result. If you're not happy with a company, I'm go go for gold. Leave a review, call them up, say, hey, I'm not happy with this. But like, I don't need to hear about it. I mean, I don't go around bad mouthing companies. It's just not, not really needed. I mean, I've dealt with plenty of companies I haven't been happy with and I either just go back or I just go somewhere else. The diesel smart guys, it was more the feeling you got when you were there. So really easy to talk to. They let you come in the dino room. They explained everything, what was happening, why they were doing certain things. And that means more to me than just someone who thinks they know what they're doing and they'll just take your car and you've just got to trust them. I'm not really big on that. You know, I did the dino run, like that was, that was awesome. I do look super serious because I was concentrating so hard. I've never had fast cars, I've had so it's a little little bit exciting. Not that it's super fast. So yes, that is just a disclaimer, just to sort of chill guys. This wasn't built for the racetrack. It was just built 
as good as it was dealing with whatever we had at the time. I will show you what she looks like now. These tires will probably look familiar. These are my old 35s and they're on Pro Comps 16 by 10 neg 25s. So they're a 315 75 R16. And that is how she's sitting. Um, the back will come down a bit once the jaws go in the rear and the rear bar goes on. Not sure on brand yet. It's so hard to get into. So these are auto gauges, also from Diesel Smart Performance. Hope you enjoyed the video. This one, it was sort of hard to film and do the dyno run but you'll get a good overview of what we did. I'll put all the details for Diesel Smart Performance down below. So if you wanna get in contact with them, they're based in Mackay and they're right next door to Mackay 4x4, which you would have seen in the video before this. Let's get into the video. Alrighty, so right now the 105 is next door at Diesel Smart and the guys over there are gonna tune it and show everyone what's to go. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the car in shootout mode. You've already been videoed. You're videoing? Yes. Well, I don't want to be in the video. <laughs> Why not? He's <laughs> not the most handsome. <laughs> Just stand in the middle because you stand on the sides, it tends to stretch your face out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to put it in shootout mode. Now, shootout mode allows the weather station to work. So on a Dyna Dynamics F7, especially on mine, we go straight in. We're going to run it up in fourth gear. Yeah. And then we're going to do it at High pressure would be what 40 psi on this? Oh, I'll probably do those 36. 36? And then it's a six cylinder force, so we're gonna do it in shootout F6. Okay. okay. Now we check and make sure our air intake temperature, inlet temperature is working, make sure everything's on, weather station is on, everything's working there. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the torque. Right now, the torque will be set at 100 kilometers an hour in fourth gear. So what we have to do is run it up on the dyno first, yeah. see what RPM we have at fourth gear at 100 kilometers an hour, and that will make our torque line and show that correct amount of torque. If you want to make more torque, you can offset set that, yeah. and you can make 100 newton meters more, or 200 newton meters more, yeah. or whatever you want to do. Yeah. So the correct way of setting it is to set the actual RPM at 100 kilometers an hour, cool. which will give you a correct torque reading. And we've got the controller here. We do it in advanced. And what we're going to do is we're going to start our runs at 50, about 1500 up. The RPM, start climbing, climbing, climbing until you get to whatever desired RPM you are, which is normally just before the red line. Mm -hmm. And then you will go load off. And that is it. Cool. Then it'll have your dyno sheet there for you. Yeah, so awesome. it's very simple, very easy. AFRs on a diesel, most diesels need to be anywhere between 99 and 20 to 1. Yep. Okay. Um, now, if you have them richer, like let's say 16, 15 to 1, mm -hmm. which we have in most drag cars, um, you're going to see excessive amount of easy cheers. Yeah. Melt pistons, crack That's pistons, awesome. name it all. The cowboy tune style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This isn't that bad because, <laughs> you know, mine's like that. Yeah. But I know the consequences when it happens. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. A little depends because we, when we tune it, we tune it to exactly what people want. Yeah. So, it's so varied. Yeah. Like I'll have people come in that know something and I'll have, it's mainly younger people. Yeah. Come in <laughs> and know something. Yeah, all the smoke. That just to me looks like wasting money. <laughs> yeah, it basically is, but you know, I don't know, I get the point. But yeah. yeah, that's what you want. That's, that's what, what you want. want. <laughs> okay. It is Danielle, isn't it? No, it's Danny. Danny. It's only Danny. Danny. <laughs> I'm too. <laughs> Danielle! Yeah, that's, that's the one. <laughs> I do that too. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> Wash the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> so, this uh, one here is your main mixture screw. This one doesn't have a boost compensator on it. Yeah. So you're not going to, we're not going to be able to tune the boost compensator of the suit. So we take the main cap off, which is normally a screwdriver. We're going to grab a paint pen. We're going to mark so we know exactly where we start from. So in case we ever do have to come back, we can. Or well, we know, you know, we've done one full turn, or we've done one half turn, or yeah. we know exactly where we've gone. And then, We'll get the right size socket, which is a 12 mil. And we will loosen the nut off. Okay, perfect. And then we will grab the screwdriver. We will 
will then start the move it in and I will have to grab a spanner or a small screwdriver. Okay, so how far in do you want to go, Mike? I'm not here, remember. <laughs> I'm a floating um, camera. I think I'm going to go uh, half a turn to start with. And then you can see a white mark. So we start in the front. There? Yeah. And then we will go half a turn in. Okay, perfect. And now we'll run it up again and see what the air fires are. They've already picked up 30 horsepower basically. Mm -hmm. And what we're going to do is now we're going to lift the boost up. So let's do that. Now we're going to fit the boost controller to lift the boost up. So what we'll do is we'll go straight off the uh, straight off the compressor housing straight into here. And what this will do is it'll push up the ball bearing spring, and then it will allow the excess boost to bleed off when it needs to, yep. as well as control the actuator. So we want to set probably 15, anywhere from 12 to 15 pound on this one, and that'll be perfect. So let's fit that up, which is going to be a very hot job now that we just ran the car up. <laughs> and I was laying under it before, and I worked out the best way to do it. Now that it's lifted, this makes life easier. Yeah, I'll just sit up on here. Mm -hmm. the actuator. I see it. Melt it and it'll look nice and neat and tidy. Mm, and it's because the carbon, unless you're... I'll film that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but all right, man, because if they get too clogged, then it restricts all of the turbo. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> so you basically change them every single time you change the oil. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do now on the boost controller is down will be more boost. Yep. And out will be less boost. Okay. So we want to set it at about 12 pound, yep. which is on the diner here. Boost, here to side. So you can see with the controller, we're set at 12.7, but yep. we want to be at. We are making 6 psi of boost at the start, where we, before when we were starting, we were only making 2. Yeah. Right. So at the same RPM, at the same load, we're making yep. more boost. Right. And we're making, so far, 322 newton meters of torque from 180. Okay, you want to do the final bonner? Yeah. Okay, guys.
67 horsepower. Oh, that was it before, sorry. Yeah. And now we are at 111, so over 110 at 12 psi of boost and 300 newton meters of torque. Yeah, awesome. So, and you can see immediately at 100 kilometers an hour, like your torque at 100 k's an hour in fourth gear already was about 160 newton meters. Yeah. And now at 100 kilometers an hour, you're looking at nearly 260. Yeah, so that's better. 100 newton meters already, going straight up. We did. So, and you can rove out a little bit further as well. Yeah. So perfect. Beautiful. We'll get it off the dyno and go for a road test now. Awesome. Alrighty, so we just finished the dyno run at Diesel Smart Performance. So, final figures. <laughs> People will tell you Disneyland is where dreams are made, but really, it's in dino rooms. Follows all the way back under the tray to the second one. Under the tray? That was the dyno run on the 105. Unfortunately, I forgot, and I'd like to think it didn't make a difference, but I know it did because I've been driving on 1HZ for evers. The aircon was on during all those dyno runs. <laughs> because this head unit is faulty, there's like a whole circle board behind this. This is broken. <laughs> the aircon is hardwired, so even though we turned it off here we got to actually turn the switch off if you drive a 1hz you will know that if you turn the aircon off that's like a whole nother 20 horsepower not even joking that's how i get up hills can't get up hills with the aircon on and for everyone asking this is the oil return line it's not pretty but it's there so <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, please let me know down below. Any more questions about the 105 that you want to know, just ask. Otherwise, I will see you in my next video.